In this video, we're going to discuss polyatomic ions. Now, we've already discussed ions, but all of the ions that we've discussed have been monatomic, or they only contain one atom, right? So what that means is that there's only one atom and there's a charge, right? So we've looked at, for example, Na+, right? This is the sodium cation, right? There's just one atom there, and it has a positive charge. And we've looked at the chlorine anion, right? One atom there, it's a negative charge. Uh, think about the potassium cation, right? One atom and a positive charge, right? So all of these um, ions that we've looked at before are all monatomic. Which just means that there's only one atom involved. Now, what we mean when we talk about polyatomic ions, this means that it is a group of atoms that contain some sort of charge. So these are molecules of themselves, right? That they're, they're actually molecules and they contain a charge, right? So let's look at a few examples of what I mean by polyatomic ions, just a few examples of these, right? So think about, um, so a common ion, polyatomic ion is NH4 plus. And this has the name of the ammonium anion, right? So all of these ions have uh, common names that are assigned to them. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in the next video on naming compounds. But um, these guys have, you know, common names that are given to them that you'll just have to be familiar with. So uh, ammonium uh, ion, it's an ion with a plus one charge. So let's see where this plus one charge comes from. So the number of electrons here is 10. Right, so this guy has 10 electrons. Right, and you can probably deduce the number of protons just from the total charge, but you can also get it from the periodic table. Right, so we know that uh, nitrogen should have seven protons since it has an atomic number of seven. And each hydrogen contributes one proton to this group of atoms as well. So you end up with a total of 11 protons here. Right, and I just got those. You can get those numbers off the periodic table, right? Nitrogen has an atomic number of seven, hydrogen with an atomic number of one. So you end up with a total number of protons of 11. So just like we do in the monatomic case, right? If we have this imbalance between the number of protons and the number of electrons, we have to apply, uh, assign an overall charge to the ion. So that means in this case, since we have 11 protons and, and 10 electrons, we have one more proton, then we have electron that's gonna be a positive one charge, right? So we end up with this polyatomic ion of NH4. Now let's look at another example. So OH minus is a popular um, polyatomic ion. This is called hydroxide. Right, so the hydroxide ion. And if you look at it, right, there's another system that has 10 electrons, right? So we're going to end up in a situation where we have 10 electrons again, right? Um, and again, turning to the periodic table, we can figure out how many protons we have in this case as well. So oxygen has an atomic number of eight. So that means it's going to have eight protons. And hydrogen has an atomic number of one, so it's gonna contribute one proton. So we have a total of nine protons for this molecule. So we end up with nine protons. So in this situation, we have a, a, a imbalance of electrons and protons where we have one more electron than proton. So we're going to end up with a negative one charge for the hydroxide ion. Now, like I said, this, this, poly, this business of polyatomic ions is a very general case. Uh, there are specific uh, common polyatomic ions that you need to be familiar with. Um, and we'll talk about those in the next video. Uh, one thing I did wanna mention before we move on is that these guys can get involved in ionic bonds, right? So for example, the molecule sodium hydroxide, right, NaOH, is uh, an ionic compound where you have a sodium cation,
But then the anion is a polyatomic anion. It's the OH minus anion, right? So in a similar way, just like with NaCl, you have a positively charged sodium ion, cation and a negatively charged chlorine anion. Here, you have a positively charged sodium cation and a negatively charged OH hydroxide anion, right? So you end up with a polyatomic ion forming this ionic bond. Now, I, I named this compound, I, I refer to it as sodium hydroxide, um, and that's what the whole theme of the next video is going to be on. What are the rules of how we actually name these compounds um, and, and what, in what systematic way can we take a formula like this and turn it into a name like sodium hydroxide.